white people rationalize all sorts of reasons why there are more of us in jail, unemployed, and not in the labor force at all. They rationalize for themselves the motivations they have decided are why black people are being killed at the hands of police. To them, it is in our character to be what they have for generations been taught about us, unable to live among them peacefully, unable to succeed. Many see us as savages, unable to help ourselves, wantonly killing ourselves for the sake of our savagery, of no account, lazy, and all of the synonyms inherent in the word black and in the term minority. They discount and indeed dismiss for themselves the probability or to a larger degree the slightest possibility that their own history created an ideology of success and failure, of theirs and ours, of superiority and inferiority. Indeed, race as color as well as race as character are both used today to deny an apportion on the most limited amount of opportunity in every area of American culture. Call it cognitive dissonance, unconscious bias, willful ignorance, or something else they will rationalize for themselves as a way to reject reality. They would see the world in the way they imagine it, and not the way it essentially is. Well, except for the part where they are supreme and justified and entitled. But here is what they will never admit as long as the ideology of white supremacy exists and as long as the system of racism to support that ideology exists. The truth of the lie. That it is always, at the very least, obfuscated and gaslit and at worst outright denied. But the truth is the truth is the truth. Therefore, much like the infected substances or infected tissue must be drawn out and cauterized, the infected substance of white supremacy must be drawn out and cauterized before the wound in their humanity can be healed. Black people have had to, for generations, behave in ways that can be considered superhuman in order to be perceived as simply human by this white supremacist culture, which holds even the most mediocre among them superior over us for no apparent reason except race as color or race as character. All one has to do is observe the areas where we are allowed to be seen as excelling, like sports. Even with the myriad of systemic barriers placed before us, we excel, most times beyond any conceivable expectations of what humans are supposed to be capable of. And we know in all other areas where we are performing, even at regular jobs to support our families, we have had to and still must at all times be at least twice as good as our white counterparts or we can be summarily dismissed while the most pedestrian white worker will not. In fact, many of us regularly watch them promoted and paid double what we make. Hell, in my own experiences, participating in hiring and then training my own bosses over the years as well has been the case. I was talking with a young black man recently who recalled a white person he worked with making $75,000 20 years ago. He explained how 20 years later he still doesn't make anywhere near that but it is 
at the position equivalent of this man's boss 20 years later. Think about that. His salary in 20 years still doesn't measure up to what the white guy made back then in the same position, even though he is in a comparatively higher position today than the guy he worked with 20 years ago. And this is just the economic subjugation. We also deal with the law, policing, and injustice components of systemic racism, among others, every day. We see all of this all the time. We live all of this all the time. And it is exhausting, on, and debilitating to the mind. So just imagine the collective superhumanity necessary for the endurance to wake up and live through the various atrocities living on the spectrum of white supremacist ideology each and every day. It is so sad to think about how many of us who started out as children thinking we could be ourselves only to discover we couldn't tried to be super and got worn out. It is disheartening to know so many of us gave up trying to be super knowing we couldn't and eventually succumbed to the savage status white supremacist culture branded on our brains. And there are those white people caught up in the lie who still want to deny us rights and privileges you enjoy. You make up excuses, but the ugly truth is you want to do so because you need to believe you are justified by those among us, those you damaged generations of abuse and denial ago. And that is so twisted. But don't think for a moment most of us who are still practicing superhumanity are being super because we want to or ever wanted acceptance from white people. We don't care about being accepted by our oppressors. Don't flatter yourselves. When the reality is we shouldn't have to become superhumans just because you insist we aren't human in the first place in order to pretend you are human. At what point is white America going to stop this ridiculous behavior against black people for the sake of feeling superior? How superior are you when you must use policies, covenants, laws, over-policing, biases, and hatred to ensure your continued status? How superior can you even be when you have to cheat to do it? We are black humans with a red S on our chest still trying to survive in this inhuman world because those in charge lost their own humanity and tried to scrub ours out with their bleached history. It is 400 years over the time to draw out the infected substance of white supremacy and racism in humanity and cauterize that wound. It is time to make it right. This is Dr. Cynthia Elise Smith, and this is The Doctor Is In. Thank you.